Hello everyone and welcome back to Brooke's Speed Bazaar. My name is Brooke and I hope you guys are all doing really well. Um, in today's video, I wanted to kind of take it a step back in relation to a video that I've already posted on my channel called 14 Ingredients to Avoid If You Have Fungal Acne. And in that video, I share ingredients, I just name them, um, and I kind of challenge you guys to commit them to memory so that when you're scanning products in the store, you can be a more savvy shopper. Today, I thought I would do a little bit of a precursor or a prequel, if you will, to that video and talk to you guys about the three categories. So in that video, I do mention that there are three main ingredient types that we're trying to avoid. And today, I just want to break those down a little bit further and then just share a few interesting things with you in relation to those types of ingredients um, and the acne world and the beauty industry because it is quite fascinating really. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing in this video and then I'm going to hit you guys with several more of those videos coming up very soon. Let's just get into this video. When we are talking about fungal acne, there are three main categories of ingredients that we need to avoid and they are as follows. We've got fatty acids, lipids, and then esters. When it comes to these ingredients, there may be some, so there will be some fatty acids out there that are actually okay for fungal acne prone skin. We're just trying to avoid ingredients that have a chain length of 11 to 24 um, in their structure. So if they have one of those chain links, anywhere from 11 to 24, they are going to mix with the malassezia, which is also um, the name for the yeast that is actually on your skin, that then feeds on all of that oil and fatty acid and lipid and blah, 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 and what have you. It's basically all like fattiness. And then it just multiplies and spreads the whole rashy type of acne all over your skin. And so that's what you're really trying to avoid. You're trying to avoid feeding the malassezia yeast on your skin when it comes to these products. And that is why we avoid fatty acids, lipids, and esters. So let's go ahead and start breaking those down further. All right, so we're gonna break down fatty acids first. So what is a fatty acid? A fatty acid is a substance typically found in plant and animal lipids or fat. And fatty acids include compounds such as glycerides, sterols, and phospholicids. They're used in cosmetics as emollients, texture enhancers, and when mixed with glycerin, cleansing agents. They're basically just a substance that is found in a plant or an animal in the, in the fat of a plant or an animal. And in skincare, we use them to thicken our products, so emulsify the product and make it a more stable texture. Um, we use it as an emollient. Um, which would be softening to your skin. We use it as a texture enhancer. So again, that would have to deal with like making your skin appear more smooth and soft. And then we use it for skin replenishing. So really overall, this is just an ingredient used to make you look more supple and youthful and soft. I wanna really drill this point into your, to your head, so I'm gonna say this at every single part, but fatty acids are bad for fungal acne because they can actually act as food for the malassezia yeast that's on your skin and feed it, and therefore you have a disaster all over your skin because you are feeding it instead of like starving it, essentially. We are on to our second main category of ingredients to avoid, and that is lipids. What are lipids? Lipids are, any of a class of organic compounds that are fatty acids or their derivatives and are insoluble in water but soluble in organic solvents. They include many natural oils, waxes, and steroids. You could also say lipids are a wide range of ingredients found in plants, animals, and human skin. And in skincare products, these are used as emollients and thickening agents. So again, what are they used for? This is the common denominator among all three of these main ingredient types that we're avoiding. They are used for emollients and thickening agents in your products. So emollients, again, to keep your skin really nice and soft and supple and looking healthy and glowy and youthful. And then um, as a thickening agent to just make the product a lot, you know, richer, creamier, more stable and user friendly, essentially. Lipids with a chain length of 11 to 24 are going to be really bad if you have malassezia because they then will feed the malassezia yeast on your skin and increase everything. Now, this was something I found really fascinating when I was going through some of my old products and I wanted to share this in this video right now. So I'm gonna take you guys on a little journey onto my computer and show you something right now. 
All right, welcome to my screen. We are on sundayriley.com, which is a brand that I have no harsh feelings towards. However, I have to use them as an example because this is just insane. We're gonna go to shop by category and choose Acme. I used to use this brand and I love a lot of their products. Most of them are no longer um, going to be ones I use because they're not fungal acne safe, but there are actually a couple on here that are okay for us, so I might highlight those one day. But for the purpose of this video, let's talk about their acne range. Now, it's all of these green things up here which are very much Martian themed um, and we're gonna click on UFO oil because this is the one that I purchased at one point in a bid to clear up my acne now I got this for $40 it was the same price then as it is now and you get 0.5 fluid ounces same exact deal I put this on my face one night and already the next morning I woke up and my skin didn't look great my pores had seemed to like get bigger and just overall my skin didn't look very like clear and pretty and like have that clarity that you're looking for in a product to be working but i thought maybe my skin just needs to adjust so i used it one more night the next morning i woke up i had so much more acne my pores looked terrible and it was going to take a while to be clearing all of those problems up now had i only known then what i know now hindsight is always 2020 um i would have seen that just in the first line of ingredients, this would have been a terrible thing for someone who had fungal acne. And really, I think acne in general. Um, oil is just never a good idea, but let's just go through this really quick. Um, first line, milk thistle seed oil, nope, that's gonna feed the malassezia. Black cumin seed oil, feeds malassezia. Cucumber seed oil, right there. Um, pomegranate seed oil, cranberry seed oil, flax seed oil, and that's just the first two lines of ingredients, you guys. It goes on and there are a total of 10 lipids in this that would just have wreaked havoc had I continued to use this product. So um, this is just kind of an example to show you guys how important it is to be able to identify those ingredients without putting them into a fact checker or any anything and just know what to steer clear of again no disrespect to this brand because I do think they have some really great things but this is one that because it's formulated for acne I just cannot understand um, what the thought process is behind this all right you guys we are on to our third category which is going to be esters now what are esters Esters are an organic compound made by replacing the hydrogen of an acid by an alkyl or other organic group. Many naturally occurring fats and essential oils are esters or of fatty acids. Or they are a compound formed from the reaction between an alcohol and an acid via the elimination of water. Triesters, a group of three esters, form a backbone of many fats, waxes, and oils that have emollient and skin conditioning properties. Um, almost all of the esters used in cosmetic products are non-sensitizing and in most cases are quite beneficial for dry skin. Now, of course, that is only going to be true of people who are not um, suffering from severe fungal acne. Esters are used mostly as emollients, so skin softeners. Yet again, that is the common thread here. For the third and final chanting time, we need to avoid esters with a chain length of 11 to 24. Why? Because they will feed the malassezia yeast on your skin and multiply all of your fungal acne. Um, and then I wanted to share this kind of interesting thing about esters. So I was um, doing some research yesterday and looking into squalane oil. Squalane. I'm probably going to say squalane. Squalane oil or squalane. Um, and it is as most of us know, okay for people who suffer from fungal acne. You're specifically looking for the kind that is plant-based from sugar cane, so derived from sugar cane. And we like it to use as an emollient. That's one of the benefits of squalane oil. So in theory, all of this emollient <laughs> that we are allergic to when it comes to fungal acne could in theory be replaced by something like squalane oil that is safe for fungal acne sufferers um, and will soften and condition your skin. Now I'm not going to say that it's going to be a great thing for everyone and I think there would be some stabilization issues and some things like that so you'd obviously have to figure out your formula that works for you but um, it's just a nice thought to know 
just because we can't use these fatty acids, these lipids, and these esters as our emollients, we can have other ingredients to replace them that will make our um, skin just as soft and supple and glowy as somebody who doesn't suffer from fungal acne. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Give it a thumbs up if you learned something. Tell me something that you guys learned in the comments below right now so that we can continue this conversation. Also, um, if there's something that you guys specifically would like me to talk about, I love to get your feedback and I would love to custom and tailor my channel to some of the stuff that you guys are super interested in. Um, so tell me that in the comments below as well. And that pretty much sums up everything for this video. I hope you guys are doing well and I will see you tomorrow for a new video.